a scientist reference and have a gravitational pull. Okay, and the moon has a pull. And the earth pulls. But the sun is pushing. And so when we leave the earth and its protective barriers, which it's pulling, that protective barrier is now, once we leave that protective barrier, it's now going to push. Hence why we don't really get debris falling to the earth on a regular basis, I would assume. It's never really landed on anyone's home. You've never heard anyone's, oh, I've seen, you know, the most of seen is probably shooting stars, and that shooting stars is probably big debris coming out of all of this nonsense as it comes around and wraps around our... Uh, our stuff is probably highlighted, very lit up, burning debris coming from this star. Probably, it's got stuff that I'm coming up with here. Sorry about that. So, there we are, we're rotating around this star, and the Earth is putting up with all this. Not to mention, our star is probably putting up with all this because there's debris coming from other neighboring galaxies that's been thrown out to us now the difference is, is when it comes to heat okay as it travels through space it might just cool down but it's in such large quantities or quantums that it may not cool down hence um, the galaxy you know is heated up because of the black hole supposedly in the center of the universe in the center of the galaxy so this heated gas might take a hell of a long time to cool down but what we know for sure is because earth is zero element space and it's been thrusted there's nothing to slow these gases down these gases are always moving at higher speeds from its starting velocity so there, there's likely give us a second So, um, there's likely to be um, this same storm battering around our sun just the way how it is battering around Earth here. Because we've been taught that there are stars out there that are far greater in mass and size than our sun. So, there's a whole load of heated or frozen gases flying around out there. Gases that can probably get as cold as, as far as I'm aware. Um, um, nitrogen. Nitrogen is something that can be really cold. If you get frozen gas nitrogen, I don't know if that's... But... Um, but um, we're talking temperatures that could probably get even colder than that. Maybe. Maybe. But it's also gases that may not cool down so easy. You know, as they're moving, they're probably generating their own heat due to movement as they fossil around each other. Remember, as they fossil around each other, they're generating, chances are, gravitational fields. Uh, gravitational pulls and you know positive energy negative energies hence how planets and stars and etc are born um, so we're taught so these things so as we're looking at this little image here it's only a very small spectrum of what this image could actually really look like which is something that I want to implement into my work so we'll take a bigger step here and I'll take a bigger push. As you can see now, the Earth is completely engulfed with this raging heated storm that's just right outside our doorstep. Maybe that's why space looks so dark from where we are. Maybe this thing is so dark it, it swallows stars and all. It's far fetched. Could be way out. Maybe not. Maybe so. But 
that's quite interesting. Something that I came up with. So, based on that notion, that would be quite scary to think about when travelling out to space. If that was an obstacle that we've always got to face. A storm that insane. Not to mention, if we was to leave Earth, and Earth was a bit reluctant in accepting us back in due to its gravitational field, you know, it's pushing all sorts of magnetic things out, from asteroids to meteors to gases, which means it's not allowing anything back into its bubble, you know, so it's, it's very protective, that's what it would seem like. And usually if you light a match and you put your finger near that match, you get burnt. The sun is kind of like a match, guys. Anyway, and the smoke that we're seeing is like the smoke coming from that gas. I mean, I've just made that visible. This could even just be the heat energy. I've just made it visible. So, you're going to get burnt. Now, if you leave that planet and you come flying out of that planet, let's just say you're coming this way, and you're being chased by this holy storm that never stops flowing because the sun never turns off and it's just pushing and pushing and you get caught in that push you're gonna be thrown way out beyond Pluto and to get back you're gonna have to try and fly through this storm yet alone through Earth's magnetic field which seems stubborn and letting anything back in now you could say you want to come in from this angle or maybe this angle or maybe even this angle or you want to be smart and come in from this angle maybe this angle here uh, that angle or this angle the sun is three dimensional it's spherical, it's round there's no angle you can come in to avoid this mighty storm and the rawness of its destructive power you know we're talking radiation will probably deform any sort of metals in its path there's a high chance you know literally just melt it into oblivion and i don't know the kind of spell that we have that could withstand the hottest heat on earth today but if i research i would be interested to know if it could withstand the raw heat of the sun at such a close proximity um and so that's something that i came up with now there's two points to this i'll cover the first point because the second point i most certainly won't forget the first point is is um this is what i want to put into my art and this is how far that i do go when it comes to research and how interesting i want my stories to be i don't want it to just be an idea and fantasy this and that and that but I actually do want to try and put an element of understanding something where you can look at it and kind of be like, yeah, that actually makes a bit of sense. You know, because in each and every single one of us, we all have a bit of science, if not a lot of it. And science is very fun, it can be interesting. And when you're allowing your mind to open up to possibilities of what could be and what is, as far as I'm concerned, you're allowing yourself to become more valuable. And I think that's what my art, and that's what I hope my art will encourage people to think about science in a more fashionable and a more practical manner, rather than um, just always being flooded with other people's ideas, um, allowing themselves to think about what they might find interesting about space, and in whatever way they can, um, uh, implement that into you know whatever interest they might have whether it be art or whether it be um, novels or whether it might just be everyday hobbyism you know whatever it is jot it down and most importantly share it because I don't know if this makes any sense or not if this could be you know so far-fetched it just so ridiculous or if it actually makes a hundred percent more sense than I could ever really imagine. Regardless, there's always going to be someone out there that will look at this and be like, wow, this is as good as Star Wars or Star Trek, you know, fantasy films that are highly sci-fi, 
um, science fictional, but very believable and very expensive because they sell their their points um, in a fashion and in a way that makes you believe it. You know, they've taken their they've taken their work and they've literally le leapt it off the page to the way you believe that one day we could actually live a life like Star Wars or Star Trek traveling and venturing the far reaches of space is it even possible we don't know but they allow us to believe that it's possible for mankind to achieve but when we take a minute and we look at this image that we you know have on screen at the moment you kind of got to say to yourself it's actually quite daunting do we even have the technology to think that far yet alone to take our feet off the ground and travel beyond the sacred realms of Earth's bosom. Now I can move on to the second point. Am I a religious guy? Mm, mm, I'll say yes, I'll say no. Um, I do believe that uh, there's a God out there but religious? Um, no. Um, do what I like to please a god out there or the god out there if I knew there was one out there then yeah I would and I'll explain why when we look at an image like this and we think about today we think about tomorrow we think about yesterday or a few years ago someone might have annoyed us or maybe we lost someone maybe we hurt someone or someone hurt us maybe it's us or someone that we really hold dearly maybe we lost them or maybe they hurt us in a really bad way and then you get angry but when we get angry we don't blame the queen we don't blame the government we don't blame the devil but we always blame God you know even as far as to have it in our common speech we do it's like oh for God's sakes you know that's in reality or in you know in actuality that's really not a good term to use I mean I don't know much religiously but here's what I do know if we live on earth and earth is really so protective so as to not allow us outside of its bosom because an image like this is possible then as far as I'm concerned that love flows far beyond any love that I have ever come to know so far what a perfect way to express love without being able to actually say I love you for you to be able to look at an image like this and say wow we're protected from such a disaster you know this continues day and night this barrage upon our earth that protects us in its way this barrage is consistent it never stops you know our earth is protected I mean look at uh, would it be Venus is it Venus I mean you've got Mars which is probably scorched um, I think it's Venus the one close to the Sun um, I believe it's another one with, with Mercury I think it's Mercury actually uh, and that one is retardedly scorched you know it can't breathe it's being battered by the Sun you know and if they're not being battered and they're frozen you know to, 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 to board ice as it were you know hostile worlds but our world allows us to breathe eat fall in love make friends go out enjoy the sun you know after an image like this you know it allows us to blink uh, to sleep safe as the world spins at high speeds around this violent image so you kind of got to say to yourself um, in that case and I don't mean to be a preacher but I don't want to preach hatred um, you can kind of say to yourself wow well in this sense at least knowing this there is a love out there that could actually protect me if and anyhow I mean again that's why I say I'm not a religious person because if I was to bang my knee right now I don't think I'll be protected but that's a negative way of thinking you know the positive way of thinking would be what if now this is quite a scenario when you look at an image like this you, it's pretty hard from my perspective to say 
I don't believe there's a religious um, being out there. In most countries today, uh, the domineering countries, I want to even go as far as to say, even the ones that ain't so domineering, majority of these countries are religious countries. <laughs> so how can you live in a country that's so religious and say that you're not religious? It kind of doesn't make sense. You know, it's almost insane to say that you're not religious in a religious country. You know, especially if a religious country holds, you know, their, you know, a royal standard. Uh, that's what I would personally believe. Uh, it can be a touchy subject, and I can't like, understand how it could be. But um, but yeah, it's a it's a, a, a serious notation. And when you look at a situation like this, and how the earth is protected, yet alone are uh, something I technically us as human beings. But you know, you look at the earth. The the the, um, the point here is the earth. And if the earth is protected from such a bombardment as this then clearly if there is truly a situation where um, you know you've got a god and you've got a devil and you've got good and you've got bad um, clearly there's a point here you know because we're being protected guys you know um, and this is everyone on earth not just the good guys and not just the bad guys but everyone you know so um, so yeah, so that was a, another aspect. Um, so my work is actually, I wouldn't say religious, but it's got religious aspects in there because I personally found religion to be very interesting. When I say religion, I don't mean religion, I mean God. You know, that's what I'm talking about. I'm talking about God and that whole notion of good and bad. Um, so I find that very interesting. I've implemented it into my work. Um, I find science very interesting. I've implemented that into my work, and everything that I find interesting about all the aspects and you know the um, uh, avenues of life, uh, whether it be friendships, families, you know, relationships, pets, um, even you know um, how you choose to handle problems. All this stuff I've implemented into my work. Um, and I'm not going to lie, it is hard, it's not hard, but it is hard, and the hard part is, is uh, sometimes, you know, you get carried away because, you, you know, you, and I love working on my work, <laughs> and what the hard part is, is, you know, because I've had many things stolen from me, um, from finance to my own work, you know, um, and so, uh, and I've had them stolen from me in multiple ways, not just um, physically, but it's also been digital. So, you know, when you go through stuff like that, I'm on a buzz of my work, and now I'm very protective with my work. And so, you know, sometimes, um, as much as I love explaining my work, very sometimes um, it's more of a protective thing as well, you know. So, um, so I can. I, I'm very appreciative that people do look at my work and that they, you know, uh, that they show support or that they've had support or have support. Um, but um, I like to make sure that I've got everything down so that I know what my work is and that I know that my work is my work and we know that my work is my work. And so, when you see my work, you can identify me alongside my work. Um, and this way, as I work progress, as I progress through my stages, I can also backtrack and build upon myself. And that's how I prefer to work. Um, yes, I would like to get a lot of finished products out there. The only thing about uh, finished products is. Um, I mean, like for instance, I've been able to work on a lot of stuff that I've been working on and in that time that I've worked on the goods that I've worked on, I've learnt what people actually do enjoy watching from my collection as to what they're more likely not to watch. And as much as I like to focus on myself, which is why I'd rather not work with let's say a producer, well not a producer, a, um, a publisher, um, 
because I'm kind of like my own publisher. Uh, and the, but the reason why I'd rather not work with a publisher is because they dictate to you what um, they believe um, they would uh, would be more uh, 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 profitable. You know what people are more likely to like to what they're more likely not to like. Uh, and most times you probably got paid for that service. But I found a way um, to work around that, and it's just typical, it's basic observation. You observe your work and you're able to understand who likes your work and who's you in your work and how much time your work is viewed as to the ones that ain't viewed. And the work, funny enough, that's not viewed as much as the work that I actually prefer working on, which can be tricky. So I can set aside my um, formulas and I can start working more on what I believe people are likely to want to see more of. Um, also, uh, so working in such a fashion I find to be slightly more advantageous than working on something and you finish it and you, no one even watches it after all that time you've gone through. And if you're doing 2D animation, it's the 3D animation. Um, you know, and if you're a 2D animator, you know how much time can actually go into 2D animation. Now, if I say, I want to sit down, I want to draw a nice little action scene, and half the 2D animators out there are sitting down drawing action scenes, well known artists, people are going to focus on these well known artists and thinking that I'm mm, not really going to be dabbling around here and there, you'll have to be lucky if someone clicks on your video and shares you, and you know. Um, so the chances are, is um, you know you're going to regardless whether you're a publisher or not, you, you're going to have competition. So um, there are ways to approach um, a market that is very um, fertile, um, and I believe I have my own ways of working around this um, this uh, notion. Majority of the times when I'm working, I'm working alone which is pretty cool because I get to manage myself, I get to manage my work and stuff um, but I can see how working in a team and I can, I can um, confess that working in a team can be advantageous also because um, you're able to tackle more avenues, more ventures at once um, so hopefully you're able to watch my uh, or hopefully through watching my uh, work um, you've seen something that you like, uh, you've seen obviously my skills uh, develop and grow because they have um, and hopefully you find it to be more interesting if you find it to be interesting be sure to pitch a word um, if you like you can give a like um, uh, be sure to let me know what you think about it if you're if you're into animation yourself um, look me up and you'll probably find um, or you're more likely to find um, my email address uh, which would be the best way to get in contact with me if you, if you have any interest or even if you have work that you're working on yourself and you want someone to help you uh, work on this stuff uh, I'm gonna start drawing a lot more um, uh, not commission a lot more um, fan base work you know but, um, just to show off my skills a bit more rather than working on my own stuff because when I work on my own stuff I'm more like flying through so you know it might be a bit harder to understand exactly where my skills range may you know kind of level out so the more stuff that I do otherwise um, I think you'll be able to understand me a bit better um, but yeah Thank you for watching and thank you for listening. I figured I'd put a bit more voice to my work um, than to just sing out a silent video. This way you get to know me a bit more, I get to know the community a bit more and I'm trying to find a way to grow with the, uh, especially the LinkedIn audience. I see a lot of animators on LinkedIn, I see a lot of artists on LinkedIn, I'm fond of LinkedIn actually. So um, thank you for having me, thank you for supporting uh, to the artists out there, and um, yeah, keep well guys. Hard work, hard work, your boy, hard work, keep it.